Good morning. It's good to see you all on this Lord's Day um, as we're together to worship. A uh, couple things I want to say to you this morning. Um, we've got a couple things I want to check, check on our announcements. Um, the Winter Bible Study will be this, we'll finish up this coming um, Sunday and the following Sunday. This following Wednesday and the following Wednesday. And if you haven't signed up yet, if you already filled one of these out, that's okay. You don't have to do it again. But if you haven't signed up yet, please fill this out and circle um, the dates. It will be here either this uh, Wednesday or the next or both um, so that we can plan. We'll have a light supper. We'll start at 6 o'clock and we'll be done at 7. So choir can go ahead and start practicing at 7 o'clock. Um, please also read through the list of announcements. We've got several things coming up in the weeks ahead that I want to just make sure you check on. So uh, the Monday morning uh, Bible study is going to be a week earlier. So check that. That will be February 5th. Um, Jeremy's Biscuits, we're going to have a special thing with Jeremy's Biscuits, um, and he's going to tell you his family recipe, so secret family recipe, so you'll learn this out. We'll have more details about that next week. Um, check that out. Also, Ash Wednesday service this year, we will be um, doing Ash Wednesday at First Methodist Church um, later on in the Lenten season. Monday, Thursday service will be here in our congregation, and for choir members, there's going to be a joint choir for both Ash Wednesday and for um, Monday, Thursday, so uh, check with Janine about all the details for that. And uh, finally, I want to mention to you that um, the flowers this morning on the communion table are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Kenny Capel on the occasion of his birthday and given by his wife, Diane, who will be leading us in worship later today. Well, it is a special day in the life of our congregation because uh, later in our service, we will be ordaining um, Don Scarborough and Kristen Truitt as deacons in our congregation. And so for this Sunday, we are changing all the pyramids to red, and I got my fancy uh, preacher robe for the occasion as well with red. Um, red is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. And so whenever we ordain somebody, we do so in the name of the Holy Spirit. Um, in, in our Baptist way of worshiping and understanding how we do church, we understand and we pray that our collective decisions out of, as a congregation are based upon the leading of the Spirit. So on the occasions of ordination, red is the color. We'll go back to green next week, but this Sunday is special. So we're glad you're here. So a word about what we're going to do. And I'll mention this in a sermon. But when we come to the time to ordain um, Kristen and Don, I will ask them to come forward and then do it for each of them, and then go back to your seat. And I'll tell you how we'll do that later. But I want you to think about now what you might want to say. And again, I know some of you all love these people, and you want to say lots of things. You say that later, or make a nice card right now. Stanton will go on. All right, enough about that. Let's prepare, prepare our hearts for worship as we hear these words from the psalmist. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. For my hope is with God. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Good morning, let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, how we have assembled today only because you have allowed us to. It's one of the many blessings that you have given us, and we thank you for that. Lord, we're so grateful that you have given us today, a beautiful day. Yesterday is gone, tomorrow's not here, so let us live in today, where it's the most important time, this very moment. And we thank you for that blessing, Lord. You have taught us many things as we have come along, as we prepare ourselves for that final trip. And we thank you for that, Lord, for preparing us and getting us ready. As a great teacher, you have taught us lessons in life. You have taught us things to see, to look for, to strive for. But you gave us the most important thing, and that's how to pray. And so, Lord, as we close this prayer, 
Let us join our hearts together as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now if you feel like it, please stand and join in singing the hymn of commitment number 382. You may be seated. Will you join me in a morning prayer together? Oh, loving God, as we have gathered in this sanctuary, this place that means so much to us, this place of long memories, this place of sanctuary, this place of safety, this place of salvation, we ask in this time that you would help us to lay aside the worries that we bring with us, the deadlines that are ahead of us, and to live in this moment, to be here in worship, and to be listening for your voice, that we may carry something away from something that is sung, something that is prayed, something that we experience or hear that may help us live with a new commitment to be your people in this world. On this day when we ordain Kristen and Don as deacons, 
Literally, we are ordaining them as servants and asking them to serve this congregation. Not to be overlords, but to be servants of this congregation. But even as we ordain them for a special role in this congregation, remind us that we are all to be your servants. Each of us can offer a way to make a difference in this world for you. And in how we can serve this congregation, whether that is helping with children or teaching a Sunday school class or being on the bereavement committee or being someone who prays for the people on our prayer list religiously, week in, week out. All of us can be servants of this congregation and your servants in this world. And dear God, we live in a world where we are desperately in need for servants. People who are willing to serve others, to think about others first, to find a way to uplift not just themselves, but to the others around them. We think of all that's going on in the world that comes across the news, what's happening in Ukraine, the continued war that just goes on and on. The war between Hamas and Israel. And every day, Dozens, hundreds of Palestinian people, mostly women and children, are dying. And still Hamas holds hostages, Israeli hostages, to try to get a better deal. Oh God, we think of all that's happening in our own country. And while we're in the midst of this winter cold, of those persons who are losing their lives in the midst of these deep, cold days. For those who don't have the education or the home or the employment opportunities that lift their family up. We think of our town where poverty is still too large of an issue for the ministries at Anson Crisis and the feeding ministries in our community. Oh God, we are a place and a society and a world in desperate need of servants. So as we call and ordain Kristen and Don today, remind us that as we do this, you are calling us all to be your servants in this world. We ask you, Lord, where we fall short, where we think of ourselves first and where we place ourselves first and our children ahead of other people's children to forgive us and to help us find ways in which we can help our children and our homes and our church while lifting everybody else up. Dear God, we pray for people in our church that are in desperate need for your love and your presence. We pray for, ask her that you would also give her resiliency and perseverance and strength for the days ahead. And if things don't come as quickly, that you would give her patience as well. We ask you to give Bruce your love and help him to know every way to support her. For those who are recovering from COVID and from the flu and pneumonia and other ailments, we ask your blessing and grace for those who we prayed for recently for all that's going in their lives, we just ask your presence of love to lift them up wherever they are discouraged and to sense that your grace and your love continues with them, even in discouraging times. Oh Lord, we thank you for this congregation, for this community of faith, for these people who help us in our down days and bring us up and they return the favor another time. All these things, we give you thanks and ask that you would help us to be your church and your people in this town, in this county. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. We continue worshiping by singing our hymn 535, I am thine, O Lord. 
Let's stand together and sing. May be seated.
right. Good morning. So have y'all heard Pastor Tim this morning say that we're going to have a deacon ordination this morning? Have y'all heard him say that? Not yet. Can you say the word deacon? Deacon, Deacon, that's right. So as Pastor Tim said, that is another word for servant. Think about the word servant meaning to serve, right? So that's a way that you can help other people, right? So being a deacon in our church essentially means that you're willing to serve. You're willing, it's one way that you can serve in the church. So this morning, we're going to gain, officially, uh, two new ordained deacons. Now, the word ordain, can you say ordain? ordain? Ordain, that's right. So that is the two people that we're going to ordain are gonna come sit. You see the two chairs? You see them? There's two chairs. So Kristen Truitt and Don Scarborough, that's right, Tucker, um, are going to sit in those chairs. And we as a church are going to pray for them and pray that God will help them to serve in our church. We actually have three people who are going to be deacons, new deacons this year at our church. So we have Kristen and Don and then also Leroy Lookabill. And he has already, Leroy, can you just wave so we know where you are? Thank you. Thank you. Um, He has already gone through the ordination process. He's been a deacon before. And so those three people are going to join the other deacons in our church who are all willing to be what we call servant leaders. Okay, so they're going to serve and help lead our church. Real quick, could we have the other people in our church who are deacons stand just briefly so that the children can see who you are? So we've got Parker, Heather, Jeremy. Look at all of these deacons. Can y'all wave at them? Hey, deacons. So these are all people who have been willing to serve in our church and help lead all of us here. Now, Like Pastor Tim said, though, there's a lot of different ways that you can serve at church. So some people serve as deacons. He mentioned some others. Some people help when we have Wednesday night meals and they get all the food ready. Some people teach Sunday school. Do y'all have Sunday school teachers? Miss Roberta, Miss Monica, Miss Kathy this morning were your Sunday school teachers, right? And so they all help to serve in the church in other ways. So this morning we're going to watch the deacon ordination. So What we're going to do is we're going to go down the stairs, have some fun, and then we're going to get to come back up this morning and watch. We're going to take a field trip back up to church when it's time for the deacons to be ordained. So when Don and Kristen come and sit in these chairs, we're going to all come back and watch so we can watch the deacon ordination service. You all should think about how you can serve other people. And let me tell you, I know that you all already do it. Do you want me to tell you one way that you serve in our church? Okay. What about when we sing? When y'all sing in church, that serves our congregation. That, that teaches people about God. Or when we did the Christmas play, you all participated in that, didn't you? And that was fun. That was one way that we served other people. Or when we've had Mission Day, and a lot of you helped with Mission Day to make cookies Those are ways that we can serve. So this morning, we're going to watch two new people become ordained deacons in our church. They're agreeing to serve our church. And as we watch that later, let's all think about ways that we can also serve in our church. Okay? Let's say a quick prayer, and then we're going to go downstairs and have some fun. Dear God, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for bringing us all here together to learn about serving other people. Thank you for all of these children and inspire them this morning to also serve others. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So one of the things that's uh, great about this congregation is people always try to help me to kind of make sure I'm doing things the right way. So I just want to let you all know that we have two Uh, time pieces up here. One is four minutes fast and one is four minutes slow. So if I do mathematics in the middle of them, I can kind of figure out what time it really is during the service. So anyways, I just had to say that. It's just too funny to me. We have two pieces up here. One fast, one slow. Um, Okay, 
Our scripture passage this morning, our next one, our main text, is from the book of Acts, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Hear the word of God together. Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manamen, member of the court of Herod the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul, so much anymore, shared a testimony of what God was calling them to do and asked the church to bless them. Or did a committee from the church, after praying about a special need and sensing a direction of God's Spirit, recommend Barnabas and Paul and the church voted on them in a business meeting? It could have been any of their scenarios or something else entirely. We simply do not know how the Holy Spirit was revealed to the church at Antioch. Luke just says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said. To me, however, the most interesting part of that passage was what came next. After fasting and praying, they laid their hands on Barnabas and Paul and sent them off. In other words, as soon as the church had a sense of God's call upon Paul and Barnabas, they ordained them, laid their hands on them, and blessed them then to go do what they felt called to do. In a little bit, we're going to repeat this ritual of the early church that has been passed on in the Christian church for 2,000 years. And lay hands upon Kristen and Don and ordain them as deacons in our congregation. And following the church at Antioch, the whole congregation, I'm going to invite all of you. Now, not all of you have to do this. If you don't have a sense that you want to bless each of them or pray for them, it's perfectly fine to remain in your chair. But this is the example that comes from Acts 13. The whole congregation will be invited to lay their hands on them, pray for them, bless them. I know that in many Baptist churches, the tradition is usually only for deacons to ordain new deacons. And I know for much of the time at First Baptist, this has been our practice. But this passage in Acts is clear. It is the whole congregation that ordained Paul and Barnabas, that laid their hands on them and blessed them. The church as a whole is mentioned in the very first verse of that passage. Then Luke tells us, as they were all worshiping, he didn't say a select group of them, as they were all worshiping, the Holy Holy Spirit spoke to them. The they in the sentence describing the laying on of hands, was the whole congregation. So, the invitation I'll be making in a shortly is based out of that biblical tradition. But that's not the only reason I suggested to the deacons we ordain Kristen and Don in this manner. You see, both of them are products of this church. You raised Kristen through the youth group of this church, through the children's ministry and music ministry. Don was formed as well in an earlier generation. This congregation has shaped their faith journey from Sunday school teachers and youth group leaders to mission trips and local projects, mission projects to music and tradition, worship traditions of this church. This whole congregation has shaped them and formed them. Not only have the deacons in this church served Kristen and Don, but this whole congregation, you have served them. Maybe you've served them with a small S, not a big S servant, deacon, but a small S. And so I think it's natural and appropriate that the whole congregation is invited to lay hands on them, 
to pray for them, to bless them, and then each of you make your decision if you would like to personally do that. What is it that we are doing when we ordain Don and Kristen? Are we injecting them with superpowers? If somebody told you that, I'd hate to disappoint you too. But we're not putting them, we're not putting some faith Teflon shield around them either. We're not offering them credentials. We're simply blessing them. Blessing them to be servant leaders in our congregation. This really is one of the core functions of the Christian church. To bless people to do what God is calling them to do. To say yes to people willing to serve in Christ's name. Unfortunately, somewhere along the line, the Christian church oftentimes thinks its job is to say no. As Christians, we often think our job is to stop people that we feel are not qualified or whose theology we think is dubious or to keep people out who we think are suspect. And that category in the past has included women and the young, the poor, gay and lesbian persons, whoever we think are outside of God's parameters of leadership or love. The sad truth is that nobody outside the Christian church thinks that we are permission givers. The reputation of the Christian church usually is, is that we are Debbie Downers, right? That we are the kind of people who rain on other people's parades, who squelch other people's dreams, who create obstacles for people to climb. And if they climb them, then they're worthy enough for us. Too often, that is what outsiders think of the church. Although maybe I'm being a little hard on the Christian church. This week in David Brooks's column in the New York Times, I thought was especially insightful for life in our country today. David Brooks is one of a handful of conservative thinkers and writers that I regularly read to keep myself looking on all sides of life and faith. If you would like to Google his article, David Brooks, and I think the title was Death of a Thousand Cuts. It's worth reading, and only like about four or five minutes long. It's not shorter than this sermon, you know, easier to read. Brooks talked about the growth of bureaucracies in just about every avenue of 21st century life in America. Did you know, for instance, that there is now one administrator or manager for every 4.7 employees in corporate America. Did you get that? One manager for every four to five workers in companies in this, in this country. Four or five people can't manage themselves, have to have somebody tell them what to do about this and that. I don't know about you, but that seems a little bit stifling. Did you know, for instance, that one-third of health care costs is due to administration. So if you wonder why your insurance is high, one third of all that is just for managers and administration, not for whatever things your doctor's doing here for you, not for just the cost of your pharmacy, medicine. One third is for administrative costs. In higher education, layers of administrators now clog campus life. One example, in the University of California system, California does like North Carolina with lots of different colleges under one big umbrella system. In the University of California system, the number of managers and senior level pro professionals and policy makers have increased by 60% over the past couple decades. While tenure track professors have increased only 8%. I thought that's why you went to college, to hear from the professor. This is not just a church problem. This is a society problem. 
Brooks writes, people who are thinking about rules and actually have actually diminished capacity to think about solving problems. If we have all these managers, all these administrators trying to make sure everybody follows the rules, do we have enough capacity to figure out innovations that will solve our problems? Now, I know that many of you have managerial positions. Some of you have retired from managerial positions. Please understand, I'm not criticizing the important work you do. Every company, every school, every hospital, every military unit, every church needs good managers. But what I'm talking about is that a society, it seems that we have lo- or are losing our balance between managerial oversight and innovating permission. And it has infected the Christian church in general as well. But friends, we're not supposed to be gatekeepers. God isn't calling us to be God's bouncers and to keep people out and to make sure that only the right people, whoever we decide, get to do what God wants. We're not supposed to be the gatekeepers. The church is supposed to be full of door openers. We're supposed to be people who open the doors for people, to open the doors for them to come into the church, to invite them to be in the church, to open the doors for service, for them to go out to bless them, to go out and do whatever God is calling them to do. We are here to bless what God is doing in each other's lives. This day, we are ordaining Kristen and Don into the ministry of deacons in our church. What if we did more than that? What if we focused on being an ordaining community all the time? And we worked on ordaining people and blessing people to do what God is calling them to do and to be who God is calling them to be. Being a church that would say yes far many more times than it says no. Being a permission-giving people. Being a faith community that blesses innovation, new ideas, new persons willing to serve in Christ's name. Notice that in the passage we read, as soon as the people laid their hands on Paul and Barnabas, they sent them off. They didn't manage them. They didn't follow along with some managers to make sure that they did what they were doing appropriately. They just sent them off. They blessed them, they prayed for them, and they sent them off. The Christian church desperately needs a new attitude of being blessing, permission-giving people. This congregation, at a time when you are about to call a new pastor, I hope you will consider becoming an ordaining community, a church that says yes more than it says no, that gives people permission to try new things, to do something they want to do, For God, in this church, in this community, they're just asking to be blessed by the church, to be encouraged by the church, to be supported by the church. When the church at Antioch laid their hands on Paul and Barnabas to bless their ministry, they were not trying to manage them or control them. The passage said, They sent them off. They were unleashing them. May we be people that listen to the Holy Spirit and empower others to follow their call. Wherever it is taking them, whether we understand it or not. But we understand. God is calling. So let us recognize that call. Bless them and send them off. May it be so. Amen.
beautiful Lord, wonderful Savior, I know for sure. All of my days are held in your hand, crafted into your perfect plan. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through your eyes I'm captured by your holy calling set me apart I know you're drawing me to yourself lead me Lord Lord I pray take me more me, use me, feel me, I give my life to the potter's hand, call me, guide me, lead me, walk beside me, I give my life to the potter's hand. You gently call me into your presence, guiding me by your Holy Spirit. Teach me, dear Lord, to live all of my life through your eyes. I'm captured by your holy calling, set me apart. I know you're drawing me to yourself. Lead me, Lord, Lord I pray. Take me, mold me, use me. Give my life to the potter's hand. Call me, guide me, lead me, walk beside me. I give my life to the potter's hand. Call me, guide me. Lead me, walk beside me, I give my love to the potter's hand. Don and Chris, I'm going to ask you all to, if you can come forward, um, take your seats here, children come back with us. So Don and Kristen, you all have been nominated, talked, invited to this position in this congregation. The deacons discussed your nomination and recommended it to the congregation, and this congregation voted on you, knowing you your whole lives, to be deacons in this church. Maybe it's exactly how Paul and Barnabas were picked 2,000 years ago, or not, but who knows? What we know is the sense of God that we sense as a congregation was a part of this choosing. We are merely recognizing that God has prepared you for this role in our church. And now we come to this moment to bless you as deacons, as servant leaders in our congregation. Hear the words of the Apostle Paul that he gave 
to the church at Rome. These are good words for deacons. These are good words for all servants, whether they have a title or not. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, as you are presenting to this congregation today, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace of God given to me, I say to everyone among you, you not to think more highly of yourself than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, this church, this body, for as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace God has give us, given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. So let your love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. These words, Tristan and Don, are offered for you as you lead our church as servants of this congregation and offered to all of us that together we may serve God in this community by being this kind of church to this city. In a moment, I'm going to ask, Jenny, we didn't say this ahead of time. Why don't you go first? Are you going to play a little bit? Not first. I want family first, then you. Okay. So um, I'm going to ask the um, family members to come first to uh, offer a blessing for Don and Kristen, and then they can swap if it can bless both people. Um, so the first people to bless you will be people of your family. And, um, and then I'll invite Janine and everybody else to come through. And we'll, let's just start on this side, come through and come in this way. And those folks, if you can come around, if you don't mind doing that. And if we need people to help others walk. Please do that. If you want somebody else, maybe want some assistance. So, all right. Kristen's family and Don's family, I'm going to invite you all to come forward and to offer your first blessings to them. And I'm going to step up here out of the way.
present to you your newest deacon who will be joining Leroy 
with this class, Kristen Truitt and Don Scarborough, who are a little bit full right now of love and tears and emotions, you have ordained them for years. From the time they were no bigger than Cal and Merritt. And maybe, I don't know, like Tucker running around the sanctuary. I, did they do that things that, that day? I don't know. We're more per permission giving maybe today. So that's a good thing. From youth groups to being leaders in this congregation already, guiding children and participating in events for this church, you have been ordaining them for years. And now you have confirmed that with a touch of your hand and the offering of your prayers. Kristen and Don, thank you for responding to the call of this congregation and agreeing to serve this church as deacons. Um, I'll let you all sit down here for a moment, and then after the service, after the benediction, I'm going to go to the back, and I know no one's going to talk to me, but I do want you to come forward, and this time you can face them and congratulate them and thank them for serving us as a congregation. So thank you all for participating in this and making this a special day for Kristen and Don, but really a special day in the life of this congregation. Let's conclude our worship service by singing a hymn, 544, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Let's stand together and sing. All right, let me thank a couple of y'all. We did things differently today, so I hope that was meaningful for you all. I do appreciate um, Diane and Janine. Thank you. We had so many choir members gone. Thank you all for leading us in worship. That was beautiful, and it was a good way to prepare us for ordaining Kristen and Don. And John Ballard, thank you for opening us with the invocation. And Whitney, thank you for the um, children's time today. That was great. Don and Parker, thank you all for all the work that you do, uh, making sure we can hear it, and for those who are home can see things and hear things as they worship along with us there. Well, I had my benediction all picked out, but we have new banners, which I really like. And um, so one of the benedictions I like to do uses those words. So I'm going to just scrap that, and I'm going to do that, that benediction. So, yeah, make sure if you um, have, did not put your reservation for dinner um, this Wednesday night in the offering plate to make sure you put it downstairs in the church office before you go. Um, after the benediction, Don and Chris, I'll just ask you all to stand here, and you all just come forward and hug them and thank them and congratulate them and uh, embrace them in, in, a, in a more relaxed way rather than a prayerful way. Let's receive the benediction. Friends, as you go back out into the world, love God with all of your being, all your heart and your mind and your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, which also means to love yourself too. 
And friends, love your enemies so that one day they can become friends and we may transform the world. And as you go back out in the world, know that God, the creator of the universe, has already gone ahead of you and is preparing a way for you. And Jesus, the Christ, is walking beside of you. And the Holy Spirit, God's love, is swirling around you to protect you and to hold you and to guide you from whatever you face this week. So friends, go in peace. Amen. Thank you.